If I was to say the church is simply a parenthesis in the process of God working through mankind, what does a parenthesis mean? If you're writing and you make a parenthesis and put something in there, what does that mean? It's set apart. It's true. So it's going to be set apart for this reason. The church is the bride of Christ. And he talks about us being gathered together with him. Much of Matthew 24, 25, and 26 includes what? The actual second coming. So, well, Brother Bob, you must be pre-millennial. I am. You're also pre-tribulational. I am. What does that mean? Use two big words. They're not $25 words. What does that mean? What does it mean if I'm pre-millennial? Yes. What else? Pre-tribulational. I don't believe the church will go through the trib. I don't. Yes, that's what I believe. Now, we're going to talk about that today to help clear up some things because what is then the next great event we're looking for? We're looking for what we call the rapture of the church, the great departure. I'm ready to leave. But I'll stay as long as he wants me to. Yeah, we give the devil a hard time around here. Yes, we do. We make no apology for that. But if you look at it, it says what he wants us to say here. 1 Thessalonians 4.13 Brothers, we do not want you to be ignorant about those who fall asleep or grieve like the rest of men who have no hope. We believe that Jesus died and rose again, and so we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in him. According to the Lord's own word, we tell you that we who are still alive, who are left till the coming of the Lord, will certainly not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel and the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. After that, we are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so will we be with the Lord forever. He's talking about meeting in the air. Now, is that him coming back to the Mount of Olives? No, it is not. Why? The church age is set apart from what he's about to do with Israel. So let me walk it out this way. From this wall to the pulpit, this represents God's dealing with Israel. Old Testament law, dealing with Israel. But as he progressed, he got up to here, And now we find out that the Messiah was rejected and he was crucified. All right? We come to this. Now, what happens from here is interesting. Because from here, God is not marking time against the Jewish people because there's a blindness upon them. So what happens is he simply says, okay, we'll move over here and we'll do the church age and we'll wait to finish this part with the Jews. When's he going to finish? When he comes to the Mount of Olives, he'll finish this up. But yet, here's the church, marches on until there's a time when Jesus comes to get his bride as the bridegroom comes and calls for the bride and the bride comes to him. All right. So then at that time, we'll go be with Jesus during the tribulation period. My belief is tribulation will be taking place down here, but we're up there. This also goes along with the book of Revelation, the message of the churches, because when the message to the seven churches is finished, in Revelation chapter 4, the next thing it said is, come up here. Last you hear about the church, until later in Revelation, until the church is coming back. So now what happens? We are gathered together with him, the seven-year tribulation, which is actually the time of Jacob's trouble. What does that mean? Who is Jacob? You don't know who Jacob is? It's, it's Jewish. 
time of Jacob's trouble is a tribulation period. So what he does is after the church, the bride, has been collected, he simply says, okay, it's been 2,000 years. We come back to here. But now what we're going to do is go back to Israel and we're going to take care of this, of them accepting their Messiah this time. So while we're gone, he picks it up again and starts the process of what it would look like if we hadn't done the church age, this was what it would look like. Now, what does it look like? You crucified the Savior. The man of sin comes. And then Jesus comes and puts an end to it. That's what it would look like without the church. So he stopped right here. How long? Been 2,000 plus years. But when the church is gone... The Gentiles, the Gentile believing and the believing Jewish people will be gone. What does he do? He picks this up again and it'll be a time of unprecedented judgment. So what does he do? He says, okay, the church is gone. There's nothing in the way. Let's step right over here. And now here we'll go and we'll do the tribulation period. But during the tribulation period, is there going to be a situation that the Jewish people will start looking for the Messiah? It is. So when they get to here, here's what happens. They see him coming as a lightning from the east to the west, and they see him coming. He comes back to the Mount of Olives. At that time, the Jewish people say, That is him. We'll receive him. So why the gap? I don't know. God said he wanted it that way. Why? He wants a people for his name, and we Gentiles, we took it. Unless you're of Jewish lineage, the rest of us are all Gentiles. I guess you knew that, right? That's what it is. But we took, we took the truth. We took that Messiah. I received him. You received him. We received him. We built nations on him. Really. Nations were built about him. Yes, it's waned and slid around, but we're getting toward the last days of what we call the church age. We're getting to that. But so what is our job today? Go into all the world, make disciples. We as Gentiles want to finish our job so that the Jewish people can finish their job. Because they had a rejection first. Will they reject him the second time he comes? No, they will not. Now why am I talking to you about this? 